Hey guys, what's up? Alec back with the daily stock market and look at that up $300 on a Netflix put option. So we're already setting ourselves up for success in the close friends list. DM me if you want access to my option trades and we'll talk more about that at the end of the video. So make sure you stay to the end if you are interested in option trading. So what this video is going to be about is earnings. We're going to go over a full week of earnings. We're going to dive into each one of these different stocks. We're going to focus on three of them. However, there are a lot of different stocks to choose from this week. July is a huge month for earnings and this is the first serious week where it's picking up. So the next few weeks from here on out for the rest of July is gonna be very busy with big, huge companies reporting earnings all this week. So you definitely don't wanna miss out on this week of trading, next week of trading, or the week after that, the next three weeks are going to be jam packed. Then dive in a little bit deeper into the three stocks. We're going to do Netflix, Tesla, and Snapchat for more of a deeper dive. But Monday, we had Bank of America report earnings, IBM report earnings. Tuesday, tomorrow, when we wake up, we're going to have Johnson and Johnson reporting, LA Bank, Hasbro. And then after close is when things start heating up because we have Netflix. Okay, reporting earnings. And you guys already know I have a put out on Netflix that already made me around $300, okay? Now, Wednesday before open, we have the NASDAQ. And then after close, we have Tesla, okay? Tesla is gonna be an extremely anticipated earnings. United is one that I would like to talk a little bit more about in this video because we already talked about Delta last week. Delta reported and they did good on their earnings report. Now moving over to Thursday, we also have American Airlines. So if you wanna play the travel stocks, that could be a good idea. Um, gather the information that Delta put out and use that as your advantage on United and American Airlines. On Thursday, we have AT&T um, and American Airlines, which we already talked about. And then after close, we have Snapchat. Okay, so Snapchat is going to be another big one. Remember, if you guys have been trading stocks for a while, you might remember that Snapchat, whenever it reports earnings, it typically moves 10% in either direction. So there could be a big move coming for Snapchat on earnings. And then Friday, we have Verizon, American Express, Twitter could be another interesting one. Next Era Energy. Okay, so the first stock we're gonna be talking about reporting earnings tomorrow, which is Tuesday after hours. You can see it was up 5%, 4% on the day, and then it went down around 3%, okay? And once it was up 5% on the day, I took that as a signal to buy an option. So here you can see, again, we're up on that option on the close friends list. So that's a good $300 profit right there. And we'll probably be making even more money on that option tomorrow. So stay tuned, subscribe with post notifications on so you can see the update there. Now I do post every single day on my close friends list, but on my YouTube channel, I only show my close friends list posts once in a while. So this is that once in a while. Here's a peek into my close friends list. You can see in the top right, there's a little star, green star in the corner, implying that it is on my close friends list. So you'll see that I posted Netflix looks like right now is uh, at one of the resistance Netflix could be setting itself up to drop to $160 per share around tomorrow when it reports bad earnings. I'm more focused on the Snapchat put, which we took out on the close friends list also, because the contracts are a lot cheaper for Snapchat. Netflix is like $1,200 for a solid contract, but it could pay off. Obviously, there's risks with Snapchat and Netflix. There's no guarantee they are going to see red on earnings, but it does seem like they will. Deep dive into Netflix and Snapchat earnings today to do at least 30 to 60 minutes of your own research could pay off a lot. So that's what you should do after this video. Also, deep dive into Snapchat and, and Netflix to see if taking out earning, uh, taking out a uh, put option on Snapchat or Netflix earnings could make sense for you. And it could also give you some more conviction in your play. We're already up $300 on the Netflix put. So you might be a little bit late. If you want these more posted in real time, turn on notifications on my close friends list. DM me on Instagram to join my close friends list. I'm going to be shutting it down soon in the next week here. So it's a great time to get on the close friends list where you can see exactly what I'm buying, what strike prices, expiration dates, and everything with notifications straight to your phone. We'll also continue to read Netflix earnings could reveal millions 
millions of lost subscribers. Now it's pivoting to ads for growth, but might lose its identity. Netflix is down in more ways than one. On Friday, struggling streamer was briefly down for some users, putting shows like The Umbrella Academy and How to Build a, a, a Room out of reach. But downtime isn't the Netflix only problem. The stock's down 70% on the year as subscriptions sag and revenue growth slows. Skip intro, probably what Netflix wishes it could do with the quarterly earnings, which it reports tomorrow. Its first quarter results are any indicator things are not going to be going well. Subpocalypse, Netflix lost 200,000 subscribers when it was expecting to add 2.5 million, which is insane. Blame post lockdown. Okay, next episode, Netflix said it expects to lose 2 million more subscribers in the second quarter aka the one that reports tomorrow the year it cuts 450 jobs so it's expected to lose 2 million but it could report like a 5 million loss tomorrow which could be a huge downward movement in the shares price stranger things have happened in 2019 netflix ceo said its streamer would never do ads period now netflix is doing ads in april it announced it would launch a cheaper ad tier the goal to attract and retain subscribers. High price, subscription overload have made it harder to consume for multiple streamers like, you know, Disney Plus, Hulu, HBO, so on and so forth. Soft landing. Last week, Netflix said it was partnering with Microsoft to build out ads. Microsoft ad biz isn't as big as the rivals like Google and Comcast, but it is one of the few big techies without streaming ties. Hard pivot. This year, Netflix has hiked prices to make up for sagging growth and support its original content spend, which ballooned to $13 billion last year. Stranger Things Season 4 reportedly cost $30 million per episode. The takeaway, to keep your identity, you might have to lose it. To maintain its rep as the number one streamer um, famous for original content hits, Netflix must do something we thought it would never do. Who fight itself with ads after its first subscriber loss in a decade, which was last quarter. And that's why it fell so much on reporting's last quarter, if you guys remember. Netflix had to choose cut between cutting down on content spending or cutting in the cost of its services. Ads could be a big profit puppy but might cost Netflix its frictionless prestige. So overall, I think we'll see Netflix closer to $160, $170 per share after reporting earnings. That's when I'm going to be cashing out this put for around a 100% gain, looking to make $1,500 on that put option. And then I'll put, move that those profits maybe into buying shares. So because I profited probably $1,500 or plan to, I'll probably take at least $500, $750 and stick that into Netflix stock for long term because Netflix has sold off so much that even if it bounces back to around $250 per share, $300 per share, that's still a 50% increase, 20 to 50% increase in the next 24 months that I think is possible for Netflix. So around $160 per share, I think it's going to be a lot more of attractive of a price to buy Netflix right around that 165, which is by the way, a five year low on Netflix. Netflix could bounce back and think about it yourself. I did a poll on my Instagram and I think you'd probably agree. If you had to unsubscribe to all your streaming platforms and only keep one streaming platform, which one would it be? For me, it would probably be like Netflix or HBO. And for me personally, Netflix takes the cake by far. Okay, next one up we have reporting on Wednesday is Tesla. Okay, they're at $721 per share currently and the question is will they be falling on earnings or will they be going up on earnings should i buy before earnings should i buy after earnings and the first thing i like to do on tesla has this cool thing on Robinhood where you know you can go to shareholders q and a's and there's actually 11 million shares represented in some of these contracts so these are some of the biggest shareholders of tesla and these are some of the questions that they are asking chinese electric vehicle manufacturers seem to be doing a better job than their western competitors excluding tesla at innovating its software and design how can tesla make sure the company is staying ahead with those manufacturers 
both within and without China. Okay, so that's a good one. We'll like that one. And if you want to listen to the call, I would recommend it or having someone record it for you, especially if you're interested in hearing Elon Musk. Um, I don't know if actually Elon is going to be on the panel for this earnings. I know he was last quarter. This quarter might be different. might be someone else handling the question and answerings. Elon recently tweeted about lowering prices once inflation cools down. Can you elaborate on what you mean by cooling down and how aggressively the co company would be lowering prices? More broadly, how do you think um, about auto pricing long term? So here we have an article and it says Tesla's earnings are impossible to predict. Watch these two points instead. No one knows what to expect or what investors will focus on on Tesla reports as quarterly earnings on Wednesday. But the key points to watch are clear cash flow and demand lockdown in China to fight COVID-19 as well as the entire Chinese auto industry in the second quarter. The output lost at Tesla's Shanghai plant which is the company's most productive factory, makes it nearly impossible to accurately project the electric vehicles maker's profits, which I think is a really good point because the shutdown in China, like it just said, hindered a lot of its production. All things considered, Tesla should probably earn less than Wall Street expects. Okay, profit forecasts for the second quarter started out at $2.30 a share. Now they're about $1.85, down 20%. Forecast for vehicle deliveries, on the other hand, started out at about 350,000 units, but the company only delivered 250,000 cars during the quarter. That's a 27% drop, seven percentage points worse than the decline in estimates. Fewer deliveries reduce revenue, but the damage is likely to be worse in terms of profit. At any manufacturing company, percentage losses or gains in sales are typically magnified on the bottom line. Tesla, for instance, had all its fixed costs throughout the second quarter, but it didn't have all of its production. Don't forget, Tesla has a big Bitcoin charge coming this week. The setup for the second quarter result announcements is similar to the situation described before Tesla's first quarter results came out in April. Tesla delivered fewer cars than Wall Street expected. And we won't read the full article, but if you do want to read the full article, it's definitely a good read. Just type into Google, Tesla's earnings are impossible to predict. Watch these two points instead, and then look for the barons.com article. So overall, the last four quarters, Tesla's beat every single time. There's a good chance they're going to beat this time. It's impossible, like the article said, because of the Shanghai factory. Tesla is also down around 40% still from highs of $1,200 per share. I think it's good to dollar cost average going in. Um, and you can see that it looks like they're starting a new little support and resistance and trend line channel right here between May 24th and current day. If we dive a little bit deeper, I think that and looking for price points, I think under $600 per share is realistic for Tesla. And personally, I have price alerts even set at $575, $595 per share. I really want to get into that $500 range for Tesla to be buying shares for long term. I think Tesla has huge growth ahead of it. And I want to hold for two, three, four, five years or longer. And the last one that we'll be talking about today is Snapchat. It was up around 6% on the day and then it fell around 4%. So as you can see, we did took out an option. That's what we were talking about in the close friends list. As soon as we saw this up around 6, 7%, okay, when it hit around 14.50 per share. And you can see that we played this perfectly in the close friends list. Snapchat is the new one I'm looking to play puts on this week. They're almost certainly going to have a week earnings report coming in Thursday. Hopefully we'll, we'll see them green Monday or Tuesday, which we did. All right, bang. The best part about Snapchat is that there is good contracts under $200 per contract. Before buying the put, I would like to see them closer to the resistance of $14.30, which exactly is where it hit and which triggered our buy in the close friends list. Snapchat is a risky one to play during earnings with lots of reward potential, 
because at this point it's almost n normal for Snapchat to fly up or down double digits during earnings report. So we posted last night on the close friends list that $14.30 was the place to buy this put option. And then right when it hit $14.50, it fell all the way down 4%. We're already up 13. Some people are up 20% already on that option. And that was just only one day of holding. I think it's going to continue to go down. And I think that we can see Snapchat closer to around $12 per share. And I'm looking for at least 50% gains on this option here. I'm not really looking to buy and hold Snapchat for long term. It's too much of a risky play for me. However, if we see them fall another 50% from their current prices closer to around six or seven dollars per share i'll be tempted to buy some snapchat for long term so i didn't want to drag that video on too long thumbs up on this video if you really appreciate it subscribe with post notifications on if you want to get the option plays on the close friends list message me on instagram it's not going to be available for much longer i have over a thousand students now a part of the program over 500 positive testimonials come on the success number five um, if you want to go to my highlight section, just click success number five and go to the most recent ones too, because we've had a lot of recent success. Obviously we've had a lot of success in the past too, but it's always good to look at some of that recent success that we had with JPM. We had with Netflix here. We can see, yo, I just wanted to thank you. I sold this morning when I saw it was over $200 per share. Uh, per contract to make sure I took profit since I lost $60 on Elite Auto. I can tell that you really do look out for those in your group, and I just wanted to say thank, thank you. Up 63%, $238. Okay, and there's un there's countless stories just like him in the close friends list. So if you want to be a part of it, if you want to develop a new skill, if you're a beginner looking to get better at the stock market and learn options, I have video programs for beginners to teach you everything step by step. And you can also follow my trades so you can buy exactly the same contracts I'm buying and you can set it up for notifications alerting you anytime I buy or sell. So you're in the loop at all times. I can even shoot you over my website so you can check everything out for yourself. And then if you like what you see, you can sign up right on the website and get everything started. All right, guys, share this video with a friend. If you want to see more content like this, subscribe with post notifications. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Remember, don't time the market, buy the market. Peace.